This is going to be a film study video on Derek Stingley, who was one of my favorite prospects pre-draft. Uh, there were some wide ranges in terms of projection and where he might go. He went quite high to the Houston Texans. They picked up two really nice rookie pieces uh, for their defensive backfield in, in Derek Stingley and Jalen Petre. Uh, this film is going to be part of a study and an assertion that I have that rookie defensive backs, corners, and even safeties are struggling early in the season, uh, giving up big plays. And I don't mean big plays like 20, 30 yards or more. I mean intermediate balls, deep outs, deep curls, deep comebacks, and the occasional vertical. And when I say that, I mean Derek Stingley, Ahmad Gardner, uh, Kyler Gordon, Kyle Hamilton to a lesser extent. Uh, you know, he's not covering people man-to-man -man like those guys are. Jalen Armour Davis, or another rookie corner for the Ravens. This is primarily a Ravens channel. And if you're unaware... If you're not a Ravens fan, the discussion through the first three weeks, or one of the points of frustration really, has been all the passing yards that have been given up and who's giving up those yards. And I, I really reject some of the ways that certain ratings um, structures or certain ratings websites apply pass yardage allowed to certain players. I'm going to show you at least two examples in this video of Derek Stingley, uh, who's got a bright future and, and a bright present. You know, I trust. I would trust him if I was coaching him on defense. I, I love his attack mentality. I think the Cortland Sutton, Sutton matchup in Week Two was one that was not in his favor in terms of size and explosiveness and catch radius. But he competed the whole time, gave up some yards. I think had two defensive pass interference calls against him, and I'm going to show you both of those. But uh, I think the Houston Texans would roll right back in there and put him in the same position again because he seems like that kind of player that's not going to fold uh, mentally. And is going to stay with it. So with that being said, let's look at, um, I think, about eight eight plays of Derek Stingley from his rookie year. First two weeks primarily. Here he is matched up against Sutton. And they're playing him in press man often. They play him in off man a little bit. I'll show you that. Slant, well defended. I think you'll agree. Uh, they get him for the interference, I think, on this, this backside hand. This right hand coming across the neck. I think is what they called the interference on. The flag comes in from the behind here. But nice challenge if you ask me. Even though it's a defensive pass interference penalty, I think Stingley is the type of guy like a lot of high-level DBs that wants to challenge things challenge things and makes thing, make things difficult for the receiver uh, so that it's a cumulative effect as the game goes on. The receiver's thinking about it every time that the ball is caught. Okay, this is a different situation than what I just described. A lot of space being provided here. A little unsure of, of what the Texans are doing coverage-wise. It certainly looks like man, whereby we've got man here because when this tight end post-snap goes across the formation, that guy who uh, this guy right here goes with him. And then uh, simultaneous to that, the running back flow is here. This middle linebacker goes with him. So that looks like man, but we've definitely got off coverage up to the top. Jalen Petre is spinning down to the top side of the field. And then there's just too much room here between Stingley and Michael Pittman. It seems to me as if Stingley doesn't want to give up big plays, and that might be what he's coached to do. So one of the time, one of the things I try to caution people on is like, hey, we give they give up a completion. You don't know the coverage call. You know, you can watch stuff like this and say, hey, we would like you to be a little closer to him once the play is extended a little bit. So Stingley's down here at the bottom playing this like off man against Cortland Sutton again. Initially, there would clearly be space to throw, but Russell Wilson has pressure in his face, operating off the left side of the offensive line, right side of the defense. And yes, we would I would like Stingley to close a little bit more here. Once the play's extended, does a good job challenging. Cortland Sutton, big, strong guy, still makes the catch for what appears to be a first down. All right, down here to the bottom side, you have this two-high shell. Watch what the Texans do out of it. Same formation I showed you uh, two plays ago. I think this is an early down because they're playing an invert cover two, a drop cover two. And so Stingley, again, is leaving too much space there. But what, I think this is invert cover two. So what I mean by that is they're dropping the safety down, dropping the safety down, and then these two corners are essentially becoming the half-field players, even though that line I just drew there for Stingley, that's not the angle that he drops back at. Now, having said that and trying to defend him, there's still too much space when they get to the top of this curl. Look, you can see Matt Ryan has not released the ball yet. Look at the separation between Pittman and the corner up to the top side. And you'll see as I, as I play this that Stingley is still trying to recover his feet. So he's definitely conscious of getting beat deep, if you ask me. 
and not giving up the big play. And again, that might be what he's coached to do. A lot of athletic ability there, a lot of playmaker and ability. You know, if there are some people who thought he was drafted too high, I do not think so. There is a hell of a lot of talent in that guy. Um, I just can't wait for it to be seen, and, and uh, especially against receivers like this. Now, this is a tough matchup, and it's an interesting coverage. <clears throat> some would kind of call this cover three. It's clearly zone from Stingley's standpoint. So we're going to get two running backs running wheels out of the backfield, so a joker set. This inside linebacker does a great job of running with this wheel, okay? Whereas uh, this guy up top is going to kind of zone this and react to it. So pay attention to that first, and then we'll talk about Stingley. So you definitely get a man reaction here from this inside linebacker on that wheel, which was the near side running back, the bottom side running back for the screen for us. Up top here, you got more of a zone reaction. Some would say this kind of looks like cover three, but we're really squeezed in tight here for this to be cover three by these guys. It's mesh, so you're getting an underneath route here and an underneath route there. And I just think that Stingley is not recognizing this quick enough. Uh, he's there to push the receiver out of bounds, but we would like for him to be recognizing this now. And I think he's focused on the quarterback. I don't think he's seen the mesh here or the rub concept, to be honest with you. So I think he's focused on the quarterback like a lot of defensive backs are, and they're coached to do that at times. In my opinion, sometimes they're coached to do that too much because it leaves you with little route recognition. All right, two really good reps for Stingley because I know that so far in this video, even though I claim to really like him and say that I think he's a really good football player, I have shown a lot of bad reps. So here's a really good one. Why? Well, it's shorter space. He's not worried about giving up the vertical. And so in my opinion, and I'm using this to be illustrative, for you. It's a great challenge. He's smaller, but he's got great timing, leaving his feet. I think Cortland Sutton is even like putting his hands on him a little bit here, not pushing off, but just executing great technique for himself, Cortland Sutton, to try to provide a little bit of space to catch this football and maybe even um, keep Stingley from jumping on the time that he wants to by making contact with his body. Stingley is the athlete, a great athlete, still able to get up and challenge it. But my overall point, when there is more space to defend and more possibility of, of getting beat deep, Stingley seems to end up further off from the receiver. So I think that's illust to me that's evidence that he's worried about giving up the big play. Because in situations like this, down near the goal line, you've got real tight coverage and, and great challenges that I'm not sure would occur if the ball was on the 40 or the 50. Because he appears to be being coached to not give up the big play. This is a great challenge. What ends up looking like a China in by Pierce, which is, is really just the quarterback extending the play. So his route initially brought him out here, and then he brings it back in towards the X and Texans. Stingley's able to recover. He's got a burst to get there and slap the football away right as it arrives. That's Alec Pierce. I think third-round draft pick out of Cincinnati. Showed a lot of ability last year for, the, for Cincinnati in college. Off screen to our right. Is Stingley, I'll pause it a little bit. You can see that Matt Ryan's extending the play, and Pierce is about to bring his route back in towards this X in the middle of the field. Great timing on the challenge right there by Stingley. So the ability is there, no question. The ability to challenge, the willingness to fight is there. I think he's going to struggle with these bigger receivers right now. Now, having said all that, all the young DBs are struggling with certain guys in the NFL. Kyler Gordon's given up the most passing yards, according to certain rating services, of any corner in the NFL. Ahmad Gardner had some issues against the Bengals this week. I believe Ahmad Gardner gave up a touchdown pass in week two, but I could be wrong there. You can see the Stingley again. Now, this is a great job by Sutton. Selling the vertical hard. Jim, get out of here. Sell this vertical hard. Stamp down and then break this out to the sideline. Starts to sell that vertical now and then brings it back to the sideline. You can see the separation that he's created. But multiple rookies having trouble in coverage. Now, certain rating services have Kyle Hamilton as giving up like next to zero yards in, in, in pass coverage. He's playing a lot of middle of the field free safety. So his role was very different from Derek Stingley, Ahmad, Garden, Ahmad Gardner, Kyler Gordon, Jalen Armour Davis, Pepe Williams. This is a Ravens channel in case you don't know. I generally do Ravens film. So those are two names that I'm very familiar of in terms of how they're covering people, how they're playing. They're catching a lot of flack right now, especially J.A.D. 
A vertical route. Just think he's too worried about the football too early here. Once he rec- and and by the way, you know, Cortland Sutton is just burning out of here. And I think it's time to turn and go. To me, it just looks a little late in his recognition to turn and go. You'll see him keep his eyes on the quarterback a little long. I think Derek Stingley's hungry. To me, it's time to turn your head and go. And he's looking here. Why? He wants to see if the ball's thrown his way. And I think he's just got to be he's got to be a little bit more technical. I guess maybe technical is the word. Because to me, his helmet should have been pointed this way about two yards sooner, something like that. Maybe two and a half yards sooner. We will want you to be turning and going. Now you say, well, he might he might break that route off to the outside. That's true. I think Stingley has all the skills. I think he has all the physical skills. I think once he starts to recognize uh, situations and routes sooner, the, you'll, you'll be looking at a guy who's going to make some plays. You know, is he going to have five interceptions this year? I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. There's no reason why Derek Stingley can't get, you know, 8, 10, 12 pass breakups, well, especially if he's going to be targeted as much as Denver did in week two. Uh, I think he's a much better football player than he showed in that game. You can let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section. To be honest with you, you know, it's fine with me whether you agree or disagree. The guy was drafted incredibly high by the Texans. They clearly trust him. They clearly trusted the evaluation of the physical skills and the film that he had put out there at LSU his first two years. Um, I am going to do a longer film study on Stingley, Gardner, Kyler Gordon, Kyle Hamilton, J.A.D., Pepe Williams, all kinds of DBs, rookie DBs, that are having trouble with a certain type of routes. Now, in this video, clearly, if you're a Texans fan, you know it doesn't paint Derek Stingley in a positive light. There was four or five positive plays I wanted to show. I was really using this as a preview to talk about the fact that, or to parlay, to, to segue into the fact that a lot of rookie corners are having trouble. Even Ahmad Gardner, who was not targeted at all in the preseason, and play great against the Ravens in week one, has seen more targets and more completions against him in week two and three. Now, he did make two extremely nice plays against the Bengals on deep balls that I recall. Um, they still lost the game, but I thought he played quite well against that receiving core. Let me know what you think of my breakdown, what you think of Stingley's. If you agree with me that Stingley has all the physical tools, maybe there's some recognition there that needs to speed up a little quicker, but the game is fast and the talent level is tightened up. You know, in terms of his talent versus the receivers he's going against being comparable, whereas maybe in college he was just more talented. Let me know if you agree with my assertion on how talented he is, and if you agree with some of my breakdown and a couple of the small technical things that maybe he could do better or maybe he could do a little sooner, particularly like that last route that I just showed you, recognizing, hey, it's time to go. It's time to turn to go and stop looking at the quarterback when the receiver's already gaining ground on you and pretty much getting ready to beat you. Let me know what you think of my breakdown. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you're new to watching my videos, please consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy the content. And if you think other Texans fans or NFL fans might enjoy this content, please consider copying the link and sharing it to social media to help this video get more exposure and reach.